It's the Billionaires Only Podcast. Welcome to the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Billionaires Only Podcast. I am your co-host, Rich Sean. And I am Rich Aaron, Billionaire Aaron, Huge Aaron. They call me lots of names. They all end in Aaron. Fact of the matter is, Aaron, you've got over one billion dollars. You also have more than a billion dollars, too. Hey, what are you talking about? I don't have a billion dollars. Uh, just kidding. I do have a billion dollars. I'm a billionaire, too. Oh, it's so nice. We can talk like this. Just us billionaires. Speaking of just us billionaires, today's episode of Billionaires Only is sponsored by Buysworth Patented Golden Ear. Now, I got my golden ears into you. Absolutely. Always do. Now, the golden ear is an incredible device that you put deep inside your ear and it blocks out the din of poor voices. That's right. You can set the amount of income or net worth that you will not listen to anyone who falls below it. I currently have mine set to 69 million. Get it? Oh, nice. 69. (laughs) (laughs) So anyone with a net worth lower than that, I have no idea what you said and I don't care. You're at the restaurant. They're like, mouthing can i take your order you're like what what's going on you're like oh my golden ear and then you turn it off temporarily i don't turn mine off i just order i know what they're asking me oh good point who cares what they have to say Buysworth makes incredible high-end products for discerning millionaires and billionaires and this is one of the finest products i've ever bought highly recommend it put that inside your ears and start tuning people out because what they have to say is not worth anything Well, first, as always, at the start of the show, how much ambient income did you make this week? Just assets, appreciating, interest payments, whatever. How much did you gain this week for doing nothing? It's impolite to talk about the specific numbers, as I say every week. But I will say, my friend, this was a good week. This was a good week for ambient unearned income, making my net worth skyrocket while I literally do nothing. And as I do every week, I'll give the exact dollar amount. For me, this This week it was $893,422.67. Ooh, slow week. Yeah, you win some, you lose some. Well, if I earned 800 some change. It still mostly covered my expenses for the week. Did I have to take one fewer private jet ride? Yes. Am I willing to make sacrifices? Not if I don't have to, but I did in this instance. And that's really the billionaire ethic. Incredible. Now, us billionaires, we're doing pretty well right now, uh, with the exception of some. Just kidding. Just kidding. I'm sure you're on the way up, bro. All right, all right. Us people of means, us people of wealth, we know the poor are poor for a reason, and the rich are rich for a reason. Us billionaires, we're chosen to do this. As the factory owner who started the Winnipeg General Strike said... God gave me this factory, and by God, I'll do what I want with it. That's the billionaire ethos. Yeah, we definitely get chosen for this life. Me, for example, I was chosen by my parents, who were also billionaires. They left their wealth to me. As I understand it, most poor people don't have billionaire parents, and so they don't get chosen to become billionaires because their parents can't choose that because they don't have billions to give them. And that's uh, how things work for non-billionaires, as I understand it. That's the lives they lead, the unchosen. That is interesting. That is really cool. And neat to think about, right? I've got a book on that I've been meaning to read forever. What it's like to not be a billionaire. Just It is curious how the other side lives, and just to get a real taste of that sometimes. I feel like I had a bit of that this week with my slow week. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, I used to think, oh, I wish I wasn't a billionaire. and Wanting to fit in with the other kids, obviously. Yeah, like yeah. I would say stuff at school like, oh, I asked for a Super Nintendo, but I didn't get it <laughs> just to try to fit in. and <laughs> Hilarious. Adorable, too. Now we're moving on to Billionaires Running for President Corner. Now, at Billionaires Only, we are convinced that billionaires are basically the only real people. And that's been our position since day one. My entire life experience seems to suggest it. And we care deeply about representation. Now, where are the billionaires in positions of power? It's not enough to just simply have the money to donate to political campaigns, create, you know, nonpartisan issue-based initiatives about the things that we care about, like enriching ourselves. We actually need to have literal billionaires in there. It really matters. Yeah, political representation is important, and I know we're just about to get into that, but I'll take a quick detour, too, that 
a lot of shows I'm noticing now don't have billionaire media representation either. And so it's like you're watching these whole shows. They go on for seasons and seasons about, oh, all these problems these poor people are having or these middle class people are having. And there's just no billionaire perspective. I don't feel represented on these shows. Or if they do come around, it's a villain. It's this villainous oh, yeah. caricature. Oh, the trope of the villainous oh. billionaire. It's like, thank God for Batman. Just like someone gets it billionaire hero for once i remember the first day that batman came out and we were crying we were all crying together we didn't know what it felt like we'd never seen that before so as you know our u.s president donald trump is a billionaire which is great like feels great to know that we have shared class interests even though i disagree with him on a lot of those little issues yeah and so far three more billionaires have either run for president or explored running for president this cycle including the former ceo of starbucks howard schultz he was going to run as a centrist independent howard schultz is such a classy billionaire too i find donald trump don't get me wrong he is a billionaire and that makes him better than most presidents and most presidential candidates but, you know, the gold rooms, the showy, showy. Yeah, the you know, nouveau this, rich yeah, stuff. Yeah, definitely. It's a bit gauche. Howard Schultz, ooh, mwah. First of all, Starbucks, mwah. But also the man himself, just class, class act all the way. And what our politics needs right now is more centrist independence. I'll say it. Both sides have gone crazy. We need someone who will stand in the center and be independent. Centrists means keeping things the way they are. And I like things the way they are because I have billions of dollars right now. Another billionaire in the race is Tom Steyer. He is running for the Democratic nomination. Uh, he's a billionaire. Grabbers. He doesn't support Medicare for all. That's good. Yeah, I mean, he's gotta have some brains to become a billionaire, right? But he does support making healthcare more affordable for non-billionaires. Mm. And now it actually looks like Michael Bloomberg a multi-billionaire former mayor of New York is going to enter the race. Now, that's exciting because that is our fourth billionaire in this cycle. And just do the math here. There's 607 billionaires in the United States, which means 0.65% of all U.S. billionaires are either running for president this cycle or were president this cycle. That's over half a percent of all billionaires. That representation is so huge. Think about it this way. If the same percentage of U.S. plumbers were running for president, there'd be over 3,100 plumbers running for U.S. president right now. And if the same percentage of teachers were running, there'd be over 20,000 teachers running for president right now. If the same percentage of people who are currently homeless were running for president, that is 0.65% of all American people who are homeless, there would be 3,588 homeless people running for president. Four billionaires, one election cycle, that's a big win for billionaires' rights. It's so great because I can remember election cycles in my lifetime where there were no billionaires running for office. Sad. Zero. Zero. And so people are like, oh, this overcorrection, too many billionaires now. It's like, really, look at the history here. And we're really asserting we own the political system. This is our world, not yours. And I got my golden ear in, so I can't even hear what you're saying back. Please leave. Yeah, I only hope whoever our next billionaire president is, he keeps the golden ear in at all times because those millions of yapping non-billionaires, they'll distract anyone from doing a good job at anything. And moving on to our next segment. Now, we have been following the affluenza case, Ethan Couch, for years now. Now, this is a famous teenage drunk mm -hmm. driver, yeah. killed multiple people with his truck in 2013. Whoops. Prosecutor wanted a 20-year sentence for his drinking and driving deaths. He ended up getting just probation. Why did he just get probation? Well, his defense was interesting and unconventional. It was he had affluenza. The defense argued Ethan was not trained to have limits by his rich parents. It made Ethan unable to recognize the consequences of his actions, and so he shouldn't have to go to jail. Now, and this outraged non-billionaires. This outraged the people, the din that we tune out, because they said, oh, you're just giving a kid, you're just letting a kid off the hook without consequences, and the argument is he's never faced consequences before, so he shouldn't face them now. There's two sets of laws, one for the rich and one for the poor. Yeah, and we're like, okay, yeah. right? Yeah, that makes sense. Always has been. Hot take. There is a different set of laws for the rich and laws for the poor, and that's a good thing. I mean, whether it's good or not, I don't want it to change. Now, look, I'm in favor of a different set of laws for the rich and the poor. I'm the number one backer of that. And this doesn't do that. 
This doesn't do that at all. Now, first of all, he was a minor. He's 16 years old. The idea that he's going to go to jail for 20 years for an unintentional death goes completely against like regular criminal justice in the United States. Unintentional deaths by minors in drunk driving accidents really usually do not cause anyone to go to jail. This word affluenza was just, it was thrown out during the proceedings, but it's not that the guy was rich. It's like the kid had a fucked up life. His parents yelled at each other. They threatened to kill themselves, burn the place down. This was a deeply dysfunctional family that included some moderate wealth. They were barely millionaires. Honestly, people talk like, oh, they were so rich. It's like, don't most people have a million dollars? It would seem like, how do you even live with less than that? Yeah, so for this getting chalked up to affluenza when it's actually just dysfunctional, function and the basic criminal justice system. Now, who wants to send a 16-year-old to jail for 20 years? It's more than he's ever been alive. That's a disproportionate sentence. I don't care that he was drinking and driving. I do care about that, but not like 20 years. Like, this just became this blown up media story. It wasn't like, oh, the judge is like, oh, he's rich. You know, rich people should get away with that. Because if there was a different set of laws for the rich and the poor, like we advocate, he wouldn't even be in the courthouse in the first place. He would have just paid his way out. Which, I mean, yes, if we he s- could afford it with a million dollars. The update is he's just gotten out of jail. He was in jail for two years because his mother and him tried to flee to Mexico in 2015, as we covered before. We're almost out of time for today's episode of Billionaires Only. But before we go, let's take a question from a mere multimillionaire. Now, I know it is a popular sentiment in the billionaire community to look down on millionaires, to say millionaires aren't rich enough, dirty millionaire peasants, that sort of stuff. And honestly, I participated in it as much as anyone. Sure. I just want to point out there's a big difference between being an 800 millionaire and a one millionaire. You know, like to me, the fact that we call those both millionaires is a bit weird. So just for me, when I'm shitting on millionaires, I'm generally thinking of single or double digit millionaires. If you're a triple digit millionaire, especially high triple digits, you got a ways to go, but I see you as human. Millionaires are people too. And so that's why we take a question every now and then from a millionaire, try to set them right, set them on their way towards a better life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So today's question, I'll just open up this paper. Millionaires still use paper. That's cute. <clears throat> Dear billionaires only, I am just a multimillionaire. What can I do to become a billionaire like you? Well, that's a good question. That is um, a good question. It's simple. Spend less money than you earn. Yeah, and make sure that the differential there between what you're spending and what you're earning adds up to the difference between where you are now and $1 billion. So if, for example, you're a 250 millionaire, spend $750 million less than you earn, and then you'll have $1 billion. Thanks for the great question. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll be back next week with more updates on which billionaires are running for president and uh, so much more. I hope you tune in. If you're tweeting about the podcast, please use the hashtag billionaire life. And remember, every week we do a bonus episode as well. We do two a week. The second bonus episode is only to those who purchase over $60 million in stock in the podcast. And the bonus episodes are distributed as a dividend. So please remember, if you want those episodes, buy some stock. Thank you and have a good week.